Hey, okay, I've turned the uh, laptop a little bit to make this slightly less spare and miserable looking. It's a it's a nice Airbnb. It's just laid out in a weird way. That little area back there is the kitchen. It's got a sliding glass door. If I open that, uh, the heat will rush in and it's about 200, 200 degrees in there, which is why it would be a better place to to uh, broadcast from if I were to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning when the sun's uh, coming out and remember to to record then, but of course I never do. Other than that, it's just too damn hot in there. Uh, this video is going to be about a book I read this week that I'm not going to name for reasons that hopefully will become clear. I think I'm going to call this video something like something clickbaity like uh, in exchange for an honest review because that's what happened. Anyway, had a little bit of a quandary about this. And I didn't know how to handle it. So I'm going to throw it out to people, see what they think. Uh, let me back up a little more. This week, it's been hot as hell. I have a choice at night whether I want to open all the windows and slather myself in mosquito uh, lotion, which I don't like to do every night, uh, or close the windows and then wake up around two or three drenched in sweat. You know, I can't sleep with the air conditioner on. It's For one thing, it's just a waste of energy. For another, it's just a very bad way to live in air conditioning. It's really not fun. Uh, for me, air conditioning, I'm one of those people who's just affected by it in a negative way, I think. Um, I feel like I, I get sore throats from it and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I've been, you know, turning on YouTube, plugging these in, laying the uh, the laptop under my bed, under the sofa bed thing I have here. And I've been really getting into long Steve Donahue uh, videos, older ones, uh, and this one in particular that I want to speak about, that I that I think I've got the right one here. It's called. It's an interview Steve Donahue did on the Fantasy Network, chatting with nuts, uh, N U T T S, episode sixty three, from October fourteenth of twenty twenty three. I think this is the right one. I can't find it because anyway, he talks about. You know, he's always interesting to listen to, Steve Donahue, and I'm, I'm loving these long-form ones. I've been watching a lot of his uh, lives that he's been doing recently. He did a really good one about the Neil uh, Gaiman controversy and just general uh, topics and, and addressing, you know, people who, who bring in comments and that kind of thing. They're really fun, but they're really long, and, they're, and the time-wise, since I'm in Eastern Europe, I'm in the Balkans, uh, you know, a lot of times they seem to be going on at night, but then I've been finding these old interviews too. He's a great guest on other people's podcasts. I, I love it, and I'm really catching up on the the lore and the history of Steve Donahue. You know, I know about, I know he didn't like Stoner, for example, and in this one with Ch Chatting with Nuts on the Fantasy Network, he goes into detail. I hope I'll get the right one. So, you know, I'm, I'm in and out. I'm, I'm zoning in and out when I'm listening to them in the middle of the night. And, I, and they're like two or three hours long, which is perfect because I'm just waking up and dozing back off. Uh, he talked about some of his reasons for not liking Stoner, which was very interesting. And whether I agree, and of course, there's many books he doesn't like that, that I love to hear him talk about, uh, you know, his problems with... Uh, Cormac McCarthy, who I also don't like, and there's other writers who I love who he doesn't like, such as Philip K. Dick, and what I and what I always find uh, in especially in the longer interviews that Steve does with other people, challenging with especially uh, often with a lot of younger booktubers, he's just always so well thought out about his reasons. So even if I happen to like a book, I can I can really see his argument for. Uh, why it doesn't work for him, and of course he's always really generous with his opinions and and very non-judgmental. He would never, 
condemn anyone for liking something he doesn't like, at least not in a serious way. I was about to violate a Steve Donahue rule by taking a sip of coffee, so I'm going to pause out of respect for St. Donahue and do that off camera. Okay, I'm back and I'm refreshed. So I didn't mean this to be a, just a, uh, a Steve Donahue uh, fan cast, although it's become that so far. What I wanted to talk about was something he discusses in about reviewing. And he's, as people, I'm sure anybody watching this channel knows, he's a professional book reviewer. And he's a, uh, an excellent educator on, on that, what would you call it, genre, that mode of writing, uh, you know, the philosophy of book reviewing as a professional or as an amateur. I learn a lot from him on that. Um, but he's talking about people sending him stuff or people, not, not specifically him, but people who send out stuff like ARCs, um, advanced reader copies, in quote-unquote, in exchange for an honest review. And people do this trying to get their books out. And the reason, and you'll have to watch his, his video, I'll link to it in the comments, to, to, you know, I can't explain as well as he could, his reasons for being bothered by that, by that demand. Just like, don't tell me. Um, he 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 doesn't appreciate a, a transaction. He he considers uh, you know book book reviewing his his calling. Um, I'm not explaining this well at all, so I should just drop that. But anyway, it struck a chord with me because I also fell into this this week, where there's a channel I watch, and don't worry, it's. It's not a channel that anyone who's going to see this watches. It's not a booktube channel at all. It's, it's a writing channel. I'm not going to mention it uh, for reasons that I hope will become clear. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I watched this video. At the end of the video, he offers this particular YouTuber who does writing education videos uh, made an offer to read an arc of his new novel in exchange for an honest review, the exact same phrase, right? In exchange for an honest review, here's my quandary. So I took I took him up on this. I, I said, uh, you know, these, there's the email address or whatever you 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 follow the link and you ask for the book and and all he asks is that if you read the arc, if you take the free arc, you read it and give him an honest review. I did not like this book at all. And I really am kicking myself because I don't like to give negative reviews. I'm not a book reviewer. I mean, if I'm forced to give a review of something I didn't like or something like that, it's just not the kind of thing I like to do, especially for an indie book. Um, I try and just talk mostly about books that are older. So this is my dilemma now and I'm just wondering if, if anybody cares if anybody's still watching this long if anybody has any opinion on this this is what I agreed to I agreed to read the book and give it an honest review on either Goodreads or Amazon I didn't like it now this seems like it should be his problem uh, if I had just taken if, if it had been if the situation had been hey here's an arc of my new book I would love people to read it if they could. Or I just want to send out these arcs so people can have it, which is what I might do with my own work someday. But with no ask, I would never do an ask, and now I know why I would never do an ask. Um, then I would have read it, and I would have just you know deleted it or whatever and forgot about it. But I, he wants the review... The reviews that I'm going to give is not going to be good. It's not going to be bad. It's going to be even worse than bad. It's going to be mediocre. Uh, and I I could do it on Goodreads, which I never use, which would be kind of the cop-out way to do it, or I could do it on Amazon. Uh, I'm interested to see what other kind of reviews he gets. I just did not think it was a good book in any sense. Another problem is it's not really a book for me. It's not a book, a kind of book I would read. It's kind of mainstream. Kind of, kind of a, 
it's fiction, but it's kind of a memoir, I think. It really, uh, uh, you know, maybe kind of like auto-fiction is... Uh, uh, I really... Oh, I don't want to get into the review part, because I guess I'm going to... I guess I've talked myself into doing it. I said I would do it. Uh, I'm just wondering what people would do in this situation. I agreed to do it. I didn't agree personally. I just agreed in theory, because it's like, if you click on this link, you promise to give me a review. You know, all that kind of bullshit. He would never know believe he said in one of his later videos or comments that he's given away 900 books so far so he's not going to notice and I know that from his point of view and his publisher's point of view it's a small press where he's one of the one of the principles of the company so it's not literally in well it's basically independent publishing because he's it's his uh, company and this will all come out when the review comes out eventually and I appreciate your patience, anyone who's still uh, with me on this, because it is pretty dull to talk about something in such vague terms. But I don't want to do a video trashing his book and then a review trashing his book. Uh, because generally I don't do Amazon reviews. I just can't believe that's so stupid that I agreed to this. And I realize it's just a bullshit agreement, too. It's like clicking, clicking the... Uh, you know, you know the terms of service on anything, you know, but don't do that with Disney. Did you hear about this story? This will be a quick aside, I hope. Somebody who is suing Disney because their spouse or their family member got food poisoning at the Disney Resort, and I'm not commenting on the validity of suing for that at all. However, Disney is coming back and saying, you can't sue us because you are a subscriber to Disney+. Plus." Um, streaming service and in that you agreed to uh, arbitration for any kind of legal disputes so that's very scary <laughs> I think that's going to get thrown out that's just absurd like you can't sue Disney because you clicked the term of service for their, their stupid streaming act, app at some point oh sorry for the sorry for the drinking Steve if you're watching I don't think you are but uh and it's va it's valid critique. Critique. I I do uh, get bothered when I hear people slurp and and stuff. And uh, I had a friend once who had a podcast that I could never listen to because he thought it would be fun to interview the people on his podcast while they were eating uh, a meal in public. So it's all this eating and this like this clanking of, and this is the audio po audio only podcast, clanking of plates and you know. Uh, ridiculous just uh, so I, I'm a strong believer in just talking and trying to remember to look at the camera which I forget to do a lot um, lost my train of thought I should be about done so I guess I'm gonna have to do this review and I'm I'm not going to be mean about it. I will put in there that this is not a, a book that I would read. And and I think the author will be fine with this because these people who are very serious about their indie publishing careers and have sort of an apparatus behind them and stuff do understand that even bad reviews are good because it, it is engagement on your Amazon page. It's better to have a mix of reviews than to have no reviews, but we'll see how they go. It's like, you know, and I've heard this person on his podcast and on his uh, and his YouTube channel before talking about how reviews hurt his feelings um, sometimes. And I can relate to that too, I guess, but, you know, what are you going to do? If you're going to ask people to review your book and you're going to ask people to agree to review your book. It'd be one thing if you said, hey, I've got this book coming out. I'm really proud of it. Uh, I think it uh, explains, I think it is, I think he used the word uh, proof of concept for, for the things I've been trying to teach on my channels about writing. And I think it's, you know, if it's up to me, it's going to be like, do not use this guy's method to write a book. Uh, I just didn't think it was that good. I have to cough again. So all I'm doing with this video is being very annoying and people are going to want to know what the book is. 
I don't really want to say. Maybe I'll, I'll say in the comments later or something if people are, re are really upset. Or I might uh, do a post when I actually do the review. But I don't want to like pre-review pre my negative review. It's supposed to go up on October 19th. Maybe I've left enough clues here so people can figure out what it is. I have really no idea how what kind of crossover there is from people who read in from from people who listen to booktube channels like like we have which i think is most of the people who most of the few people who watch my channel are people with other channels or or who who kind of uh, view the same kind of people versus people who watch all these writing advice channels which i watch far too many of and there's a lot of really bad ones this is just kind of a rant. Um, there are very many people out there who are just giving recycled writing advice. And this doesn't apply to the, the, the one uh, writing channel I've talked to a lot. His advice is pretty original and pretty well researched. And, and uh, he puts a lot of work and thought into his videos. But there's others who are just... You can make a whole channel on writing advice by just looking at the most popular writing advice and then saying, don't do that, do this instead, well, no matter what it is, you know. If you, you could, any, any time you can think of it, says, this is why you should not write every day, this is why you should write less, not more. Any, whatever anyone's told you to do in writing, you could do a, an opposite video of, you know, this is why you should write, uh, this is why you should not read classics. This is why you should read classics. Anything. This is why you should not read any books in the marketplace now. This is why you should not self-publish. This is why you should self-publish. You can go on and on. And, and most of these people just are promoting their own writing. And don't even get me started on the, the same thing in the, in the screenplay area. So I, I get addicted to this kind of stuff. It's really... Not that helpful. My writing advice would be find a little bit of writing advice and really limit how much you take in and don't listen to Stephen King on writing at all, definitely. Anyway, that's that's my problem. I guess I've talked it out. I guess I'm going to go ahead and do the review. Uh... Hope his feelings aren't hurt too much by my mediocre review, and that's probably the thing that's going to be the most difficult, because the book is not bad, it's not incompetently written. It would be nice, almost if it were, if it were just complete nonsense. It's just kind of tepid and low stakes, and simplistic, and naive, and, oh, listen to me. And things I just don't care for, uh, but, you know, easy to follow and well copy edited and, and flow, flows very nicely and, and isn't too long. Easy, easy, goes down easy. But I think sometimes I've heard writers say they'd prefer almost... Uh, prefer a hatchet job over a meh review. And this is going to be a meh review because that's my feelings about it. And there's really, in my opinion, no good reason to spend my time writing a paragraph or two or three or four about something that's just meh. Something I really hated would be worth doing that. Something I really loved would definitely be worth doing that. But... So lesson learned, next time anybody sends me, uh, offers to give me a free read in exchange for an honest review, my answer, I know what my answer will be, it will be definitely not. I will not do that. If someone, if a friend or something, somebody asks me to read something, give them some feedback, I, I'm personal feedback, I might do that. Like a, a personal connection, a real personal connection. Uh, but if just something comes in, uh, I'm not making any promises to ever. And uh, strangely enough, is even as small as my channel is, I have had other people ask to send me arcs. But this is a book I happened to read. I was probably going to buy it. So by taking him up on this offer, he 
he's losing ten dollars. It's a ten dollar ebook, which is how you can tell it's a small press run uh, rather than an individual uh, single author who probably would have priced it at two ninety nine or five ninety nine, or a large uh, <clears throat> legacy press who probably would have charged you know fourteen ninety nine for it. Um, you know, he probably would have got ten dollars from me, which uh, on Amazon at seventy percent uh, royalty rate would have been like seven bucks. Instead, he's going to get a mediocre review. But if he gets enough reviews, it'll 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 put him up there in the ranking. So maybe it'll end up helping him up, helping him and get some people who like this kind of stuff. I talked to some other students. Uh, people, they, they run workshops and stuff. I talked to some people on their listserv that, that seem to think this book is just the bee's knees. It makes me think like I'm not really going to bother with their content anymore. Um, although there's some inter interesting stuff in it. It's a, it's a little too convoluted. So hopefully everybody stopped watching by now because this is really getting boring and out of place. I think I've made up my mind. Anyway, any any comments, any feedback on that? If people uh, care to weigh in or not, I'll be back next time with an actual real discussion of books that I am reading. i got a couple of things uh, lined up for Garbagast and, uh, and then I need a little break from Gar Gar Garbagast and read some timeless classics and we'll we'll talk about those. Thank you, BookTube.